This is actually a, actually a true story about World War II. Um, 1940, mm, January 1940, Poland. Just after the invasion of the Nazis, um, Hitler's invasion of Poland, uh, there's a small Polish boy, 12 years old, in the city of Lagokok. Um, and he's the last of his family. Uh, his family was killed by the Nazis about two days earlier. And uh, this little boy, his name is Marco, um, finds a small piece of bread on the ground next to a sidewalk of sorts. It wasn't exactly a sidewalk. This is 1940 in Poland, in a small town in Poland. Uh, well, it's a rather small town. It's actually kind of a big city nowadays. Um, he finds a piece of bread on the on the side of the road, uh, the sidewalk, essentially, Polish sidewalks and stuff back in 1940, and he picks it up, and a Jewish expat from, uh, I think it is Australia, actually. So he was uh, expatriated from Australia, which means that he did something stupid in Australia. He accidentally shot at a uh, government official. Totally on accident, actually. The story goes, is this Australian, um, this Australian Jew, was uh, watching a political demonstration of sorts in 1935 and uh, was playing with the gun in his holster. Um, in Australia, uh, they do that, right? Because there's a lot of stuff you need to shoot in Australia. Uh, mostly emus. That's what he used to shoot. And, uh, you know, the great emu war and all that. So, he has this gun, and he's playing with it in his in his holster and points it at the government official. Oops. Boom, right at the government official. He didn't hit the government official. If he had, he would have been. He would have gone to jail. Um, instead, they decide, you know what? He's Jewish. There are a lot of Jews in Poland. Send him to Poland. That was their thought process. So this Jewish expat sees from Australia, sees the little boy, Marco, pick up the piece of bread, and the Jewish expat goes up to Marco and says, hey, do you know the story about the Jews and their manna? And the little boy goes, no, I'm not a Jew. And the expat says, you look like one, you have a big nose. And the little, Mar little boy, Marco, he's 11, he says, you don't have a big nose, you can't be a Jew. And walking by, or sorry, driving by, right at that moment, is Hitler himself. He looks out over at the kid, at the expat, and says in horrible English, What are you doing over here? About, about right. And the Jewish expat points his finger at Hitler, makes the bang motion. He does not realize it is that Hitler. And Hitler stops the car. The car stops. Hitler, yes, Hitler, and Rommel, yes, Rommel, that one, step out of the car. It's a, it's a, it's a small, it's a small jeep. It, well, it isn't actually technically a jeep. It's actually a, I'm not entirely certain what to call it, but it's the same kind of car with the same kind of function as an American jeep. It's a cargo. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Hitler and Rommel step out of the cargo, and uh, talk to Marco and the Australian expat. Marco does not have a big nose. The Australian expat does not have a big nose. Hitler does not think that either of them are a Jew. So he goes up to the Australian and speaks in Polish. He actually speaks quite good Polish. He says, what are you doing here? And the Australian expat has learned a little bit of Polish since coming because he's been there about almost five years at this point. And he says to Hitler in Polish, hi, how are you doing? Are you a Jew? And Hitler does not actually know the word for Jew in Polish, which is really weird considering how anti-Semitic he was. Hitler says back in terrible English, oh, you're American. And the Australian says, in perfect English, because he's from Australia, or Australian, Australian English, he says to Hitler, what do you mean I'm American? I'm not American, I'm Australian. And Hitler says in good German, his German is very good, obviously, he's German, he says, I can't, I can't translate, obviously, I, I can't speak German. And he says, we are never going to invade Australia, I promise. And the Australian guy, who also knows how to speak German very well, says back to Hitler, Oh, you speak German? Sure. Why aren't you going to invade Australia? And Marco, the little boy, also speaks German, because this is Poland in 1940. There's a lot of German going around. And he says to uh, the Australian, he says, You're not a Jew? I'm not a Jew? He's a Jew. And German looks, uh, uh, sorry, Hitler looks at the little boy and says, 
I might be a Jew, I might not. If you say that again, I will shoot you. And he take out, takes out his gun. And the kid runs off and uh, disappears. And we don't he's we don't hear from him again in this story. Um, so the Australian expat, obviously he was important because he made that comment, right? And I had to tell you how they got together. So the Australian expat looks at Hitler, looks up and down, and says, Oh shit, in German, you are Adolf. And Adolf Hitler says to him, and Rommel stops him. And Rommel says to Adolf, this guy can speak real good German. He's an Australian. Maybe we can use him. And the Australian thinks to himself, wait. I'm not actually an expat. My paperwork says I'm an expat Jew. He was not a Jew. He wasn't an expat. He was an Australian spy in Poland. Obviously. There aren't very many Jews in Australia. And Australia doesn't really do that. They don't expat people for stupid stuff like that. That was what was on his paperwork to allow him to get a tourist visa in Poland. So Hitler, the Australian man, and Rommel get into the car. Uh, there's four seats. Rommel gets in the back, actually. Hitler gets in and starts driving, and the Australian man sits next to Hitler. Over the course of the ride, which is about an hour, they're driving out into the countryside to search for a special ammo bunker that Hitler heard um, was there. It's not an ammo bunker. Actually, Hitler was on the search for a special piece of art by Monet, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. Claude Monet. About right. And Hitler wanted that piece of art really badly, and one of his spies told him where it was. In a shack, somewhere in the countryside. And Hitler was going to retrieve it himself. They come up to the building, the building that was um, holding the Monet, according to his spy. Hitler, the Australian spy, and Rommel go up to the building, Open the door. Hitler opens the door. The Australian spy looks in. He's a bunch of chickens all over the place. And he says to Hitler in German, a lot of chickens there. Is there really a painting in here? Because he had been told about the painting during the drive. And Hitler says to the... Oh, of course, he's an Australian spy. Of course he speaks good German. So the Australian spy says to Hitler, why are there chickens all, all over the place? And Hitler says, those aren't chickens. They are pictures of chickens. No, uh, uh, paintings of chickens. Monet's chicken paintings. 75 Claude Monet chicken paintings. And Hitler sees them. He counts them. 74. Where is the 75th? And Hitler takes all the paintings carefully, one by one by one by one, and opens up the trunk of the Jeep, which is just big enough for 75 chicken paintings of, of all different sizes. And he puts them in the back of the car, and counts 75. And he says to the Australian spy, why were there only 74, and now there are 75? And the Australian spy says, maybe you counted them wrong. And so Hitler counts them again, 74. And the spy says, you counted wrong. And Hitler counts them again, and 73. And uh, the spy says, you know what? That happens all the time with Monet. And Hitler goes, yeah, I heard about that. So they close the trunk and drive away leaving the spy behind. And the spy behind says, <laughs> Monet, he really thought that Monet drew fucking chickens in English. And he watches the car go, -doo 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 -doo. Monet, fucking chickens. <laughs> anyways, anyways, anyways. Two years later. Three years later. Two days before D-Day. Hitler is in his office with a picture of a fucking Monet chicken right above his chair. And he's saying in German, of course there's a fucking bug. He isn't saying German. He, he doesn't know about the bug in them. Obviously, there are bugs in those paintings. And Hitler, he just starts talking. He says, we need that Panzer Division to go to Normandy. And one of his aides, who's also a spy, says, no, not Normandy. You heard wrong. They're not going to Normandy. They're going to Bollet. And Hitler says, fine, let's send it to Boulay. And we all know the rest of that story. So let's tell the story of exactly why they managed to get Hitler to pick up 75 bugged paintings of fucking chickens and get him to believe that they were done by Monet. They actually were made by Monet for this purpose. He was still alive back then. I'm not going to explain how or why. You'll get it. 
What they did is the Australian government was contacted by the U.S. government. The U.S. government said, we need bugs all over Hitler's place. And the Australian government said, wait, Hitler likes to collect art. He steals off of conquered countries. They already knew this. And uh, this was 1939. And what that Australian spy comes up with a great idea to get Monet and a number of other famous artists to paint pictures of chickens and bug every last one of them. These are 1940 bugs. They're rather large. That's why the paintings were all rather large. And uh, so they get Monet and a bunch of other famous painters, painters to paint 75 chickens. Each chicken a different style by a different artist. And they put them in that little shack right there in the middle of Poland and they get a spy of Hitler's to tell them that there are a lot of undiscovered chicken paintings by a lot of famous artists inside that one shack. And Hitler asks the spy while he's being told this, why are they of chickens? And the spy thought to himself, because you're a chicken. But he said to Hitler, because you like chickens, and those paintings are collected by someone special, an Australian man. He's been collecting chicken paintings all year long. Connection, 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 connection. And who is the little boy who is 11 years old? The Australian man paid him about a quarter to say that to Hitler. And he didn't know who Hitler is. He's still alive to this day and still does not know he called Hitler a Jew and got away with it. End of story.